Welcome back to another edition of Recruiter Field. We're in episode number five of this season, and we're going to change things up a little bit. This time I've got somebody a little bit different with me. I've got an industry veteran. Devin, you've been around in this industry for how long? About 13 years. 13 years. Gary, you've been on, in this industry for how long? Um, about seven months. About seven months. So two very different perspectives. But one of the things going on, and we've been talking a lot about this, is the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. there, it's historic lows. We've got more open jobs than we do have people to fill those jobs. And then take the issue with skill sets, and it's even a bigger issue. So if, from your perspectives, how are you dealing with clients in that? What, what are they experiencing? What are the jobs, ultimately, that they can't fill today? You want to start? You want me to start? <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, really since I've been here, since I've been in the industry, I think one of the ones that has come up time and time again is, is just really any kind of very technical talent. Um, you know, IT security analysts, computer scientists, things like that, where they're looking for very specific technical knowledge, you know, the ability to, um, you know, to code in certain languages and things like that. I mean, I think that is a constant need, no matter what the industry. So technology supports every business there is now. Yeah. So of course that's going to be a big yeah. need. Gary, in the seven months you've, you've been around, what's your experience been? Same thing? Yeah, I think um, I agree with Devin completely. Um, those very technical IT, software-related engineering type roles. Um, and I also think that now with the unemployment rate being, what, under 4%? 3.7, 3.8, yeah. yeah. depending on who, you see, who you see it from. It's crucial for these companies and these recruiters to reach out to passive candidates. Like you said, I mean, there's so few people that are actively looking, but the perfect person to fill that position may be working at another company and no one's reaching out to them. Devin, how has that changed in the last decade or so? Because we see the, the, the trend up and down, up and down, up and down. What have you seen from a decade ago to today? Yeah, I mean, I think the days of post and pray are just over, you know, and we still see it. You know, we still talk to new clients every single day that are like, well, yeah, we've got it posted and we just don't have enough, you know, applicants coming through and that's why they're talking to us. I mean, a good example is, is some of the positions that we've got posted. Positions that aren't that technical, not that difficult, you'd think there'd be people all over the place just itching to take these jobs on, and we're not getting applicants. So we have to go out and we have to hunt for that type of skill set. So Gary, what do you tell your clients when they're in this box of you know, posting and praying or all this other stuff they're doing online and it's just not getting them what they need? I mean, what advice would you give to a client these days? I want to find out exactly what they're doing. You know, what are they doing to find talent? And then explain the benefits of recruitment research data. Because with sites like LinkedIn, which is a great site, we use it every day, right? But how much can you really find on there? How many people even have LinkedIn? It's great that we, we see what, every time we look at research reports, so many individuals don't even have a LinkedIn account. So if you're just relying on LinkedIn and the internet, um, how many of those pages are updated? So, so why is that? I mean, we don't want to get too far off topic here, but, but I mean, obviously LinkedIn is, is a key tool for recruiters, sure. and we're in, a, we're in an economy where you've got to find these folks, but why are people starting to have less profiles? Because the numbers would suggest there's more profiles. Well, I think one of the biggest reasons is the two biggest users on LinkedIn are salespeople like us and recruiters. So I think a lot of people look at it as, why do I even need a LinkedIn profile? I currently have a position. I'm not out there looking. There's less people looking for work now than there, there have been in 10 plus years, last I saw. So why do they need a profile? Why do they need somebody blowing up their phone or you know, shooting them emails, pitching them an opportunity? The same type of spiel they're getting from recruiter after recruiter after recruiter. So Gary, with your seven months of experience, if you were to give a client two pieces of advice in moving forward, because the economy seems to be getting better and better and better, the job market seems to be getting tighter and tighter and tighter, What's the two pieces of advice you would give? One, go after passive candidates. Well, I think we all get that. What's the other primary piece of advice you'd give? Yeah, it comes down to the recruiters. They really need to shine. They need to rise above and stand out above the rest. They can't just call and, or email and say, hey, I got a great opportunity for you. They need to do their homework. They need to build relationships initially with these individuals. They need to pick up the phone and call them. You'd be surprised how many recruiters don't even use phone calls. They're just using in-mail messages, text messages, emails. But it's important to get on the phone and call them as well. So they really need to utilize every 
strategy they have, but also work to stand above the rest because there's so much competition right now. It's higher than ever with the unemployment rates. I saw an article this morning. It was talking about going back to the basics of recruiting and going old school sure. and picking up the phone and building mm -hmm. a relationship. Yeah. Devin, what's the one or two pieces of advice in addition to that that you would give to a recruiter to a client? I mean, I think the one thing that people have to remember, especially when you're going after the quote unquote passive talent is the candidate experience. You know, I think a lot of these employers, you know, call it an ego thing, call it what it is. They want, they expect candidates to want to come work from them for them no matter what the reason, no matter what the job is, no matter how they're pitching the opportunity. It should be the reverse. You should be trying to attract the right type of talent. You've got to remember your brand. You've got to make them understand that they really need to look at this opportunity because it's best for them. You mean they have to sell a little bit? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. The People forget that all the time. You guys, thank you for the insight today. Thank you for the time. This has been another edition of Recruiter Fuel. Don't forget to come back one week from today.